Tonight, people across the country continue protesting the Supreme Court's decision to overturn Roe v. Wade. We've seen demonstrations from coast to coast this weekend on both sides of the issue, and now indie faith leaders are getting involved. Our Logan Gay headed downtown where one church offered up a space for people to process. In wake of the recent Supreme Court decision to overturn Roe v. Wade, this gathering at Christ Church Cathedral is not about solving anything, but providing a safe place for people to bring their feelings and fears and pray about them. And we knew that we wanted to offer our cathedral, our space of worship, as an opportunity for people to come together to lament, to take refuge together, to be reminded that we are not alone, and to be enfolded in, in the love of the God who is with us all the time. Ken and Kristen White anticipated the Supreme Court decision after the leaked draft earlier this year, but it still hurt. As a woman, as a mother of a daughter, I was devastated. As a leader in the church, I know how, what the cost this will be to women, to people throughout not just our church, but throughout this state and throughout our country. And I am deeply, deeply saddened and feel compelled to stand with people who are in need. She says this is a time many women feel unsafe. She wants them to know there is support. We will come together to stand with people who are in need and we will continue to come together to, to care for each other, to ensure that people know they're not alone, to ensure that people know that they are beloved by God and to find our way forward together. We will stand for justice and we will strive to care for each person. As pro-choice advocates continue fighting for women's rights, White wants them to know the Episcopal Church will be right there beside them. We are committed to justice in the Episcopal Church. We are committed to equitable access to health care for all people, particularly for women, and that includes reproductive health care. And so we want to know that people, we will stand with people in the Episcopal Church. We've seen plenty of protests in Indianapolis this weekend over the Supreme Court's decision. Just yesterday, both pro-choice and anti-abortion groups headed to the state house to make their voices heard. And while those protests got heated, they stayed peaceful. But that was not the case for other demonstrations across the country. Abortion bans are illegitimate. Forced motherhood is illegitimate. From Washington, D.C. to Los Angeles and cities in between, abortion rights protesters continued to voice their anguish following a ruling by the U.S. Supreme Court eliminating the federal constitutional right to abortion. I'm angry. I'm fired up. The fight is not over. People did this fight 50 years ago. I guess it's our turn to take the fight up again. It may take us 50 years, but we'll get back. There were also small gatherings of people celebrating the ruling. Millions of lives will be saved by this decision. In Iowa, Cedar Rapids police say a pedestrian was injured by a truck while trying to legally cross the street in front of the federal courthouse during Friday evening's protests. I look over, I see people trying to push the truck back, and I just instantly got mad and ran over, tried to stop the truck. Video of the incident shows a truck appearing to push through a group of protesters with one person falling to the ground after making contact with the vehicle. In Providence, Rhode Island, state Democratic Senate candidate Jennifer Rourke was punched in the face by an off-duty police officer and GOP opponent at an abortion rights rally at the State House on Friday night. Rourke telling CNN in a statement the incident, which was caught on video, shows what appears to be Rourke stepping into an altercation at the protest and almost immediately afterwards getting punched in the face by Gene Lugo. Lugo turning himself in to the Rhode Island State Police on Saturday. CNN reaching out to the Providence Fraternal Order of Police to ask about possible legal representation for Lugo, though we have not heard back as of Saturday night. In Phoenix, law enforcement used tear gas late Friday to disperse a crowd of abortion rights supporters after they repeatedly pounded on the glass doors of the state Senate building. Arizona Department of Public Safety spokesperson Bart Graves told CNN. In Eugene, Oregon, 10 people were arrested Friday night during a demonstration dubbed a night of rage in response to the ruling. That's according to a release from Eugene police. 
In Greenville, South Carolina, at least six people were arrested Saturday at a protest that was attended by hundreds of people in downtown, according to a news release by the Greenville Police Department. Video taken by Emily Porter shows the moment police detained several demonstrators in downtown Greenville at the rally. An officer is also seen yelling at protesters to get back, although another officer tells protesters who are jeering the police, we are not on either side. In Washington, D.C., U.S. Capitol Police arrested two people Saturday afternoon for the destruction of property after they were accused of, quote, throwing paint over the fence by the U.S. Supreme Court, according to U.S. Capitol Police. Mm. As for what's next for Indiana, Governor Holcomb made it clear he expects state lawmakers to consider abortion restrictions during the July 6th special session. Insiders within the Republican Party expect to pass a ban with few exceptions, mainly in cases with things like incest or rape. You can find more about the state's history of abortion restrictions right now on WTHR.com.